I've done several videos recently uh, putting together this prototype. This is, as you can see, a much smaller version than this one. And this one I used solder wick to make a connection, the electrical connection between the shaft and the coils. And I will put the links to those videos down there so you can see how this was done. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's okay. It was good enough to test a prototype, but it's not great. Uh, as you can see, this is actually a very old version. It doesn't have the tabs out here. Uh, and it also doesn't have the internal tabs to limit the rotation of the, uh, of the center ball. So, uh, yeah, I have a different way of transferring the uh, electricity from the outer coils. You can see it goes through here and into the shaft. And then again, ditto on this side goes here and then comes underneath here. Um, so I've got it hooked up. Let's, uh, see what kind of readings we get out of it. It starts out at 165.1. Now to compare this one, the readings ran from 18 to about 118 microhenries. And this one, we're starting out at 165 microhenries and let's start giving it a turn. Um, well, there's 300, we passed 300, passed 400. 500, 600, 700, 800. Yeah, we're now past the uh, linear coils I usually put on my, uh, on my uh, crystal radios, which are about 530. Um, 900 and <laughs> one millihenry. So we are in the range of about 700 and some microhenries from the quote zero point, which is not zero to the maximum on it. So, so yeah, this has got a lot of inductance for uh, one of these uh, variometers. Okay, let me uh, disassemble this. And I think uh, what would be interesting to you right now is how I uh, carry the electricity through here. So I've got a more reliable method. You can see that this didn't jump all over the place. A lot less noise, uh, a lot more reliable than using just the solder wick run through there. Okay, let's uh, Disassemble this a little bit step by step and we can see uh, how it was done. Let's take away this. We've already used it and unclip the top and the bottom outside coils. Get that out of the way. Uh, we will undo these temporary connections and move those out of the way. And we will center our subject here. So the interesting part today is about these things. And you may say, wait a minute, I see solder wick. And you said this wasn't about solder wick and it's not. Solder wick is an assistant in this, in this plan. So we remove the upper outside coil and now you can see what's going on. Let me get a pointer so I don't get my hands in the way. Uh, this isn't, like I said, this is an older version. And so I had to print spacers and put them in here. Uh, the newer version just has a spacer printed into the, into the outer coil. And what I have done here is we'll just remove one. I have just taken a thin walled brass tube and split it here and soldered the, uh, solder wick onto here. I put a piece of shrink wrap over the outside because it was very close to the, well, the outer coil, which is gone now. Um, and so the slot will allow this to be pinched tighter. So when the outer uh, shells are clamped together, they will squeeze this onto here. Um, and I've got it on backwards, of course. It goes in here like this. And then because of the way I've done this, I have to move the spacer and it goes into the spacer. I know hands in the way again, like that. And the other side is done exactly the same way. And then the upper shell just goes on there like that. 
And I will add a uh, conductive lubricant on there to uh, ensure that it doesn't wear too quickly, that the brass on brass doesn't wear too quickly. And that's about it for these improvements. So uh, again, this is the full size one, uh, pretty ferocious amount of uh, induct inductance. And yeah, and then these things are interesting. They work so much better than the uh, cherry rig version I had. Okay, well that's it for now. Hope you found that useful and interesting in your home DIY crystal radio and electronic experimentation.